Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Mongoolie Show. On the weekly blog, we're going to take a look at how you're going to unlock Forge over the course of the next month, as well as the Escape from Kiln event, which I'm very excited for. And coming up next week, we're going to have access to all four horsemen, finally. So you can unlock them at your leisure. Uh, it'll reset once every two weeks. We'll get into that right now in your weekly blog. All right, so first things first, we're gonna take a look at the Mechanical Marvel. Now, this is the month-long event where you're gonna be unlocking Forge. It looks pretty standard for what we've seen from other month-long events. I do like that it is a guaranteed shard drop. They're not doing any of that nonsense. We have to like open orbs and pray. You know exactly what you're gonna get. There's 125 Forge shards available to you, so you're definitely gonna get your three-star unlock, and hopefully there'll be some ways to get even higher up than that throughout the month, because that's not enough for a four-star, and I'd really like to get my hands on a four-star. So what we're going to be looking at is uh, five main events that will be happening over the course of the thing, as well as quick rumbles and alliance milestones. And we've got these big point items. But let's get right into the chart. All right, so if you take a look at the chart here, you're going to see that you're going to be collecting X batteries. That's your month-long event that you're going to be collecting, as well as the red bandana, the scanalyzer, the bandolier, the scanner, and the neuralizer. Um, you're going to be able to get 125 four shards if you make it all the way down to the bottom, as well as enough gear that you can level this character up pretty significantly. I haven't done the math to see if you'll take them all the way to gear tier 18, but it's going to be really, really strong for you. There's a ton of augmented gear, but again, this is all pretty standard stuff. We've seen this before, so let's just move on. It also looks like there's going to be a month-long leaderboard for this event, so if you can make it into the top 2% of players, you are going to get diamond orbs. Not diamond dawn orbs, diamond orbs. You're going to get guaranteed diamond characters, but you have to be in the top 2%. Other than that, you can get some T2 level 4 ions, T2 level 5 ions, some armory gear, and a whole bunch of gold, so, well, gold orb fragments, I guess. So, just do your best. We don't usually try too hard for the leaderboards because uh, we don't usually hit them that high anyways. So do the best that you can. Try and go for it. And if you can make it in that top 2%, congratulations. Enjoy those Diamond Orb fragments. Starting on Monday, you're going to be doing Cosmic Crucible battles and spending campaign energy in order to compete in the Sonic Judgment event. What that's going to look like is you're going to want to spend campaign energy at a rate of 2 to 1. You're going to get Crucible Champion Orb Fragments, although we don't know exactly how many you're going to get or where you're going to get them from, but obviously they're Crucible, so you're probably going to be winning them from there, as well as competing with your Superior 6 team. Now, the bigger your Superior 6 team is, the better this is going to be for you. It is a 7-day event, which is a little bit ridiculous. I guess that's just for the campaign energy because the Crucible is only going to be for 3 days. If you can do really well in this event, make it all the way to the bottom, you will get a diamond orb fragment from this. But other than that, you are going to be able to get some forge shards, forge shards and a whole bunch of those X batteries, which is really good, as well as a whole bunch of augmented gear. Be on the lookout for this event on Monday, where I'll do a breakdown event where we actually talk about how you're going to earn all these pieces. But for now, just know that these are additional forge shards to help you as well as the month long event, which is really good and will help us get towards that four star that we're looking for. There's also a leaderboard attached with that where you can get a one diamond, two diamond, or three diamond Quicksilver. But again, you have to be in the top thousand players in this game. So good luck to everybody out there. I hope you make it that far. I won't be. So, you know, good luck to you. The next event that we're looking at is the Midnight Mayhem event. This is going to be uh, running in concise with the other one. It's going to be feeding into the Sonic Judgment event that we were just talking about. What you're going to want to be doing here is spending your Incursion Energy. Now, this one doesn't repeat. This is a seven-day long event, and you can get 6,000 Sonic Judgment milestone points to go towards that, as well as two, four, six, eight thousand Cosmic Crucible champion orb fragment so that's going to help us out in two different ways towards the other event which is really good you will need to spend 4500 of the incursion energy though so that will be a little bit tough to do make sure you remember to do that because there's no reminders in the game to spend that energy so just make sure that you are reminding yourself to go and do that every single day multiple times you will need to core for this one i'm pretty sure but again come back monday we'll have the actual breakdown event of the math the new generation is simply the quick rumble event. We'll just take a very, very brief look at it just so you can see that you're going to want to use your new warriors. Most of these characters have been out for an incredibly long time. You should have most of them at five stars, if not seven stars. This event will take you no time at all. All right, this is the big one that I'm really excited for, the Escape from Kiln. This is a really exciting event where you're going to be using three characters, not five, three characters in an event to get through this tower-like uh, campaign. What we're going to be doing here is we've got 40 different levels that we have to work our way through, and they have various restrictions as you go. So at some point, I'm going to be making a video on this for sure, where I'm going to break down exactly which characters I think are going to be best in each room. But keep in mind, there's no cooldown period for characters after a battle. Health and ability persist between rooms, so if you lose a character, they're gone, but you can still fight the next room right away. 
Characters can't be healed between battles. You'll remain in the same cell after losing a battle. You won't drop down. Restarting a run will drop you down to floor number one, but it'll heal all your characters and reset your score. And then completing a cell earns a milestone reward. Now, my understanding is whichever your best run is, that's the one they're gonna take. So if you do really, really well, restart and fail horribly, the one that did well is the one that's actually going to count. The nice thing about this, unlike other tower modes, is you can just replay this over and over and over and over again. It's not like other events where you have to wait until the daily reset and you're just kind of like, well, I guess I got nothing to do. So if this event lasts for a week, that's going to be amazing for content creators and players alike because you will be able to play this for the entire week, just constantly trying to up your score, constantly trying to do better. I think this is going to be a really, really fun event. I'm really looking forward to this one. As far as the restrictions go, I will go into this more in depth and actually break down which teams I think you want to do. But for the first couple of rooms, there's no restrictions. Then you're going to have your Guardians in Infinity Watch, Avengers, Global Skill, City Mystic, as Guardian, Spider vs. Tech, which is pretty much all of the Sinister Six. So this is going to be a really fun couple of rooms. You've also got Spider vs. Skill and Gear Tier, but they have to be at Gear Tier 15. So this is where it's going to start getting a little bit tougher because you will have to have characters actually leveled up pretty high. You'll have Global Mystic at 15, Global Mystic at 16. It's weird that those two are back to back, but so be it. Villain Mutant at 16, Tech at 16, Hero Tech at 17, X-Men at 17, Legendary at 18, and Legend, sorry, Villain Bio at 18. So these last two are really gonna separate some players because uh, the Legendary, you're gonna have them built up for your DD6, obviously, but if you haven't made it that far in DD6, maybe you haven't prioritized your Legendary characters, and that's gonna be a wall that you're just gonna run into head first. However, if you have done DD6, good luck, congratulations, I hope you do very, very well in these. As I said, I don't know when this event starts, but I cannot wait for it. It looks like it's going to be so much fun to be theory crafting and working our way through this. I love that you can't just use the exact same team you've always been using. You have to like pick and choose which three members of it am I going to use, which ones am I going to like go with. And off the top of my head, looking at all these, you're never stuck with just five members. You've always got quite a few options that you'll be able to choose from. It's just kind of a matter of what have you built up and what three characters do you think are going to work really well. We'll also have to keep in mind that your character's health persists. So if you use a character early on that also works in a different room later, you might want to change your strategy on that one. As I said, we'll do a really deep dive on this one, but for right here, right now, I just can't express how excited I am for this. Some of the gear that you're gonna be able to earn is gear 16, 17, 18, you get gold, L4 training materials, in addition to Gambit character shards, which is the weird one to me, because if you're high enough level that you're doing this, you probably already got a seven star Gambit, like that doesn't seem like much of an incentive. So be it. Uh, red stars and diamonds. Diamonds, on the other hand, is very incentivizing. It's a word. Uh, so that's going to be very exciting. So I've just said it a bunch of times. I'm going to say it again. I'm looking forward to this event. I have no idea when it's going to happen, but I am very, very much excited for it. Now, the Horseman Scourge events don't really play a factor for me. I've already got all these characters at seven stars, but this is an amazing thing for newer players. I just started a baby account a little while ago and it's going really well, but this is one of those things where like, do I go for Apocalypse? Do I not go for Apocalypse? It's a big question coming up. I'm not there yet, but this is gonna help really, this is gonna help me out immensely on my baby account. It's gonna help new players out quite a bit. We do have word that they are the revamped Horseman Scourge event, but we don't know if that actually means they're gonna change some of the trait requirements because not only are, is it a little bit like a kick in the teeth, you have to build some of these teams to get Apocalypse, but it's a huge kick in the teeth. You have to build like Bionic Avengers and Web Warriors, these dead teams in order to even get these teams so you can build these teams so you can get Apocalypse. Like it's a three tier system where you only really want the end goal and that's really bad. I really hope that when they say the revamped Horseman Scourge is what they mean is that they've lowered some of those restrictions so you can bring in a wider variety of teams, especially the, the Archangel one where you have to bring in minions. Like nobody wants to level up minions. And when you were racing for Apocalypse, it was kind of like, okay, we'll do what we have to do. But now that Apocalypse isn't even like the biggest bad in the game, it's just kind of like, this hurts. I don't want to do this. We did just recently see they changed the way you can get characters like Omega Red, Nick Fury, stuff like that. If they do that same thing for these Horsemen characters, I think that's gonna be considered a huge win for the entire community, and I'm hoping that's what we see. Um, my understanding for these events is they're gonna come back every two weeks, so they're gonna reset, essentially. But if you've hit a certain milestone, 
you will not be able to hit that milestone again. So what that means is if you hit whatever, I don't know what the highest point total is, but let's say the highest point total is 2 million points. Once you hit 2 million points, you will not see these scourges ever again in the same way that once you get a seven red star Omega red, you will not see their events open to you. So that's my understanding for how this is gonna work going forward. Good luck to everybody out there. I hope you do really well. All right, and that's it for the weekly blog. We do this live over at twitch.tv slash The Mongoolie Show every week. So make sure you head over there and hit the follow button if you wanna see it and be part of the conversation and hang out with me on a Saturday morning. We're also gonna try and go live on Monday and Wednesday nights from about nine to 11 Eastern. So you can check me out at that point as well. If you made it this far in the video, I have to assume you liked it. Make sure you hit that like button and hit subscribe if you want so you can see more great content like this in the future. Other than that, I'd love to hear what you're excited about from this blog. Let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, good luck to you.